Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's Baking a Mystery. Honey, hit it. Bada bing bada. Bam. Thank you, thank you. It only took five bam. <laughs> if you guys are watching the visuals over on YouTube at Miss Mango Butt or watching the visuals on Spotify, welcome. We're gonna be making some matcha brown butter cookies today. The first step is to throw the butter in and brown it. And I'm gonna do that right now because I don't know how long this is gonna take. So we're just gonna throw it in until it turns a nice golden browned color in this little hot pot machine I've got. Den Den, you wanna I mix you. it? You wanna be the mixer That's of That's a lot this. of butter. This has been such a highly requested video, mm. such a highly requested story, which have you guys seen the movie on Hulu called Fresh? No, no. So it's supposed to be this very edgy take on modern dating and how modern dating affects people, what it's really like. And I will tell you, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. I mean, it's been such a long time since I've been pleasantly surprised by a movie. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to get into it. Modern dating is the worst. Like, I mean, is it like not? Like Tinder you're talking about? Tinder, Hinge. I agree. I mean, okay, listen, some dating apps are a little bit better than the others, but I would like to say overall, dating apps kind of suck in general, no? But it is really one of the only ways that you can meet people. Not only are you seeing people through the screen, and then you gotta swipe right, you gotta swipe left, it's mundane. But add to that the layer of vulnerability. What if this person doesn't even exist? Or rather, what if this person exists, but I'm not actually talking to them? It's just somebody using this person's picture. Oh my god, that, that's, what, that's what I had like, yeah. thought too. Yeah, and he's like, I thought about using like Chris, Chris, uh, what's, what's the famous one? Christopher god. Columbus? <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Columbus. You're thinking Christopher Columbus and I'm thinking Chris Watts. Chris Hemsworth. You're thinking of using Chris, uh, Chris Hemsworth's Hemsworth. picture. There we oh go. Oh my god, it would be like boom, right. boom, 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 boom. The joke is dead, guys, because uh, Christopher <laughs> Columbus and Chris Watts walked into a what room. What am I saying? So anyways, what if you don't click? What if they're weird? What if they're creepy? What if they're the next Ted Bundy in the making? Have you thought about that? Noah knew that better than anyone. So Noah was actually meeting one of the guys through the dating app called Piece of the Puzzle or something like that. And pretty much every single date that she had been on thus far sucked so hard. The current one that she's going on, she's in her car, still swiping on other guys as she's waiting for her date time to come. What? And her date freaking texts her that, by the way, this place is cash only implying she's gonna need to pay for her own date. Which, you know, <laughs> no opinion on that, but Noah was a little bit put off by it. But she decides to go in anyway, into this little Chinese restaurant she goes, and wow, the guy that she is on a date with, let's call him Hot Sauce Boy, yeah, you don't have to stir why too long. Why is it Hot Sauce Boy? Because um, the first thing that he won't stop talking about Oh That's a bit loud. There we go. Much better. So um, we call him Hot Sauce Boy because all he can talk about while he's on this date is about how much he loves hot sauce. About how he'll put it on everything. He eats from pizza <laughs> to chicken wings to, you know, okay. everything. Noodles. He loves hot sauce. Even though it gives him terrible acid reflux. You know, sometimes the hot sauce, it just comes like all the way up, you know, to my throat. And uh, I, I, I want to vomit. I mm -hmm. feel like I'm going to vomit. But I, I love it though. I can't stop using it. And she's sitting there eating her freaking lo mein noodles. Like, what kind of date is this? I mean, this is disgusting, right? Why is he telling me about acid reflux? He's just rambling on and on about his hot sauce obsession. And he happens to be wearing this really interesting scarf that he won't take off. You know, I feel like he's gonna spill Chinese food on it, but I digress. So Noah is sitting there, graceful as ever, trying to relate to his digestion. I love hot sauce too. Oh, I love hot sauce. Yeah, Tabasco. she's like, wow, that's great. Like, me too. How do you even talk about hot sauce the whole day? I thought that the, the, the dude is Dan Dan. The dude is no. Dan Dan. Dan Dan's like, he... I love Tabasco. <laughs> no, I mean, I do, but I put it on everything. I won't talk about it the whole day. The whole day. He wasn't even asking about her. And he just sits back after his whole little hot sauce rant. And she's being so kind and trying to relate to him and trying to be relatable. And he sits back and says, you know what? Never mind, never mind. What? You know, it's just that I feel like women in my parents' generation, like the older generation, they just cared a lot more about how they dressed and just kind of how they looked in general. Like they were more into like, I don't know, femininity. You know what I mean? Like nowadays, girls just wear oversized everything. Like it's like, like it's like a blanket. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? Like I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Noah, I think you would look great in a dress. Not that you don't look great in this baggy sweater, but you would look great in a dress. So Noah's sitting there, 
after you tell me that you regurgitate hot sauce because you're a freaking idiot and don't know about acid reflux medication or just, I don't know, stop fucking putting hot sauce and everything, you want to tell me how to dress? You, you big ass scarf boy eating your lo mein noodles want to tell me how to... I'm getting riled up. So she's upset, and at that moment, the date is cut short. They both decide to pay for their own meals, but Hot Sauce Boy wants to take the leftovers for his brother, including her leftovers. Nice. So he reaches across the table to grab her plate like a freaking animal, I tell you, and his scarf dips into the noodles while he's doing it. <laughs> Listen, is this really a big part of the story? Absolutely not. But Hot Sauce Boy is truly sitting there complaining about women's appearances with his whole chest while his scarf is swimming in lo mein. Anyways, he also asks the Chinese waitress for sparkling water and he condescendingly and he condescendingly says, You know what that is? Sparkling bubbles? Bubbles? Do you, bubbles with a lemon? And he turns to Noah and he says, I don't think she understood what I said. I don't even think she speaks English. And just like that, their date was over. Outside the restaurant, his actual name is Chad. Yeah, hot sauce Chad. <laughs> Chad is doing his thing. What a Chad. Yeah. And he's like, you know, you're really cute. I think we should totally do this again sometime. And he leans in, trying to kiss her. And Noah backs it up and she says, you, you know what? I don't really think we're a match. And he says, wow. Wow. I was literally just being polite. You're not even my type, to be honest. So... Good luck finding a guy you stuck up, bitch, and he walks off, <laughs> leaving Noah pissed and alone to walk back into her car in the dark. So as she's walking, she sees a man following closely behind her, and when she gets to her car door, she drops her keys, right? She's freaking out, and the man following her emerges from the shadows, and he's holding a cute little baby and smiles at her. She's like, oh, Jesus, thank God, right? So she gets back into her car. So here's what we know about Noah. She um, is kind of a kind of a loner. She really just has like one friend. And of course, the one friend she has is the super supportive, will drop anything for her best friend, who also happens to be a person of color. Because gotta love that detail in all movies. The overdone trope of the secondary character who will do anything for her best friend, but she's always like Asian or black. It's like always a thing. It's gotta be a thing, okay? And then you end up loving the supportive best friend more anyway because she's like the only one in the whole movie that's got some common sense but I digress and Noah seems to have a bit of an addiction to the dating app like it's not even a cute one there's a lot of creepy guys on there that send her dick pics the first messages she gets on that dating app are things like what are you wearing show me your body I just want to know what runs through someone's head when they write something like that has it worked have they ever been sent a picture of a body before I just want to know. So anyways, one day, Noah's trying to work, but she's getting distracted on the app. Like, it's almost like a reflex. She keeps grabbing at it, eating her Cheetos, doing her work, and then grabbing at it again, checking her messages, and she gets sent a full-blown dick pic. It was unpleasant, to say the least, full frontal, and she's like, you know what? I should probably switch things up. I need to go to the grocery store, pick up some food. Maybe I can make myself a cute little dinner. I got nothing to cook. I just need to focus on myself. So she starts walking through the little aisles, looking for something in the grocery store, uh, something fresh, right? And when a guy picks up a bag of cotton candy grapes near her, and he asks her, hey, have you tried these? Grapes? No. Cotton candy crepes. They taste just like cotton candies. I'm not even kidding. I told my sister and my niece, and they're like, no way, fuck you. So now I'm getting them, and I'm going to go. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> they say, no way, fuck you. What did you say? Yeah. I mean, I'm not even kidding. I told my sister and my niece, and they're like, no way, fuck you. So now I'm getting them, and I'm going to be on my way over there. Which, like, bro, that is so much information right now. If I were in a grocery store, and this is the information I was given, my head would explode. But Noah, she's intrigued. She said, Wait. Your niece said, fuck you. Yeah, four-year-olds are crazy. I mean, I, I, listen, you look like you don't believe me. So you're just gonna have to try one. And he hands her a free grape, unwashed, out of the bag. Oh, no. And Noah's mind is blown. She says, holy shit. Wow, it tastes just like cotton candy. And Steve, yeah, this guy's name is Steve. Keeps shooting his shot. He says, you live around here? I mean, not to be creepy, it's because I live on aisle six. I just come to the fruit section to talk to very good-looking people. <laughs> Honestly, he's pretty good at hitting on her. So she's just trying to get some damn bell peppers. So she wishes him good luck, good night. And Steve starts walking away. But he turns around 
And he says, you know, fuck it. I'm already ruining it. I'm already embarrassing myself, so why not? Do you think I can get your number? Maybe we can meet next week to talk about broccoli. And Pretty Noah. Pretty smooth, broccoli. Oh, yeah. It was so He's smooth. smooth. He's like, what do you mean? I just go up and I go, hey, bitch, let me grab that. Wait, I don't get it. Why is that smooth, broccoli? He's trying to be cute. Uh, Bro, so smooth. And then like, I don't get it. All right, I'm going to have to memorize that line. <laughs> yeah. I'm memorize that line. So next time if Dan Dan's not in videos, it's because he's at the local Trader Joe's <laughs> holding a bag of cotton candy grapes, looking around. Uh. Just looking around on who to start some conversation with, right? Welcome to your section journey and discovering your own pleasure and maybe even some fantasies. This is your guide. No, not me, but the Lilo Sila Cruz. Or at least this was my guide and she's literally the absolute best. I've talked so much about Lilo already. I wish I could shout it from the rooftops. I've even talked to my friends. I've even introduced them to the Sila Cruz. This is your best friend or she's gonna be. This is a sonic clitoral massager that's really just designed for anybody really, but for those who are beginners in their toy journey. This is one of the first ones that I ever started off with and it's really good because you can learn about what feels good, what feels great, and what feels even better all at your own pace. It's the literal example of take your time and you're gonna be rewarded. We've got the wide silicone mouth that you can place on the clitoris that it really helps just fit anybody and this setup makes it so that the vibrations are spread throughout the entire clitoris and not just the center. It's got eight different settings, so you can really go with whatever pace is yours. And I'm always in love with how buttery soft the silicone is that Lilo uses, which by the way, is medical grade. But the best part, the best part above all, is you know that feeling where you're like, ooh, that's the spot. Well, sometimes with other devices on the market, when you pull it closer to your body, it actually loses power. So the feeling changes. Then you're like, great, okay, that that's not what I wanted. But with this one, the Sila Cruise, it's designed to unleash the reserve of 20% power when you press it up against your body. So there's no reduction in intensity and it does it automatically. I freaking love this baby. And I just think that knowing your own body and what you really like, just elevates your whole sexual journey. So make sure to use my link in the description to check out Lilo because trust me, you'll thank me later. And thank you Lilo for sponsoring today's episode. Now Noah is smitten, she gives him her number. Cute, right? I mean, this whole story is really, really cute. Will Molly, Noah's best friend, yeah, the stereotypical trope best friend, she's a little bit more realistic. She's like, you met the guy at a grocery store and you're just now telling me this? You think he's cute? You know he's probably married. Yeah, I know, but it's been like a few days and I just can't stop thinking about the fact that he hasn't texted me. Oh, he didn't text at no, all? No, for a few days. Wow. So she's going crazy and Molly's like, yeah, probably because he's married. Like who meets people at a grocery store? Like that's weird. And speak of the devil, right after her lunch date complaining about all of this to Molly, Noah gets a text. He wants to meet her at a bar and she gladly accepts. And honestly, what a change of scenery from the, her last first date. This seems, this bar that she walks into was like the perfect blend of casual but upscale like it looked it looked bougie but not too like oh he's trying so hard it's not super famous or popular and it's not crowded with people who want to be seen it was just a very intimate bar and no one walks in she sits down next to Steve and of course they're gonna talk about all the normal date things right so let's speed run this shall we She's from the East Coast, he's from Texas. Now they're in California. He's a doctor, by the way, in reconstructive surgery, AKA plastic surgery. She's got family issues, no siblings. Her dad died. She doesn't even know where her mom is. They don't really talk. So yeah, mysterious, damaged, main character girl. And he relates. He relates to the facts because he's like, you know what? My mom's dead too. You got a dead dad, I got a dead mom. So why don't we cheers to dead parents? Sounds wild, but they're so drunk, it's their first time meeting that they're giggling out of their seats to their dead parents and they slam their glasses together and for hours and hours, they're sitting there ordering more drinks, giggling, giggle gaggling, chit chatting. He's complimenting her smile. She goes on a rant about how much she hates modern dating. And she gets super drunk and she even confesses to him. I think that anyone who believes in true love or soulmates is just dumb. No, like, listen, I'm serious. It's just like, I think finding happiness through somebody else is, it's just not meant for me. 
I mean, I feel like I've been alone for so long. I, I think I'm good at it. I think I've gotten really good at it. And so you guessed it. When they leave the bar outside, they, they kiss. Mm. And that kiss leads to a boob grab and ass pat, and they have wild, hot, steamy, passionate sex back, back at her apartment. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. They probably even shoved a couple cotton candy grapes up there. Anyways, um, the butter is now browned. Honey, will you give me a big bowl and the mittens? I call it gloves. Like, I caught it what it is. <laughs> They're mittens. Okay, so now we're gonna put the browned butter into this bowl. Ooh. I feel like it definitely could be a lot more brown, but it was just splitter splattering way too much. So Den Den's gonna hold this in place while I sift the dry ingredients. We've got flour. So anyways, they go back to her place and they have steamy, passionate sex. And who says love is dead? Absolutely nobody. The next morning, yeah, he even stays the whole night. He doesn't say, uh, actually I've gotta go work. He stays the whole night. He sleeps in the bed right next to her, which is creepy when you think about it. And so the next morning, they wake up right next to each other in the same bed. He's still peacefully sleeping. And like, I get it, Noah. I totally get it, right? It seems a little bit creepy from the outside perspective, but I get it. You want to show your friend Molly what he looks like because he even mentioned he's not into social media. So it makes sense. She, as he's sleeping, takes a picture of him. <laughs> takes a picture what? of him so that she can send it to her friend Molly. Oh, that one you don't need to open. What is that? For now. Oh, of this, him naked? No, just like of his, just his, his face. face. Okay. Just so she can show how cute he is, you know? Mm. Because the last thing you want to do is like, no, like he's actually cute, I swear. No, this is just like a really bad picture of him. Like he's actually cute. Have you guys been through that? That's the worst. When you have to explain to your girlfriends, no, 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 seriously, it's just the angle. It's just, no, like in person, in person, I tell you, it's, it's better. so much better. Oh, I said that before. Bro, the worst, right? You and then none of your friends believe you and then like they think you're an idiot. So I need you to mix this. So she takes a picture of him so that she can show it to her friend Molly. Straight up, as if that's not creepy at all. And when he wakes up, he <laughs> pretends, she pretends like she just woke up too. So right after he leaves, Noah jumps on her phone and calls her. I can't believe it. You will never believe it, but I, I, it was amazing. The date was amazing. Like I loved every single second of him. And Molly was like, okay, well send me his Instagram handle. I need to see what he looks like, like what he's into. Mm -hmm. Well, all I know is that he's Steve. He's a plastic surgeon. I need to look him up. But anyways, he doesn't have an Instagram. Oh yeah, no, that's weird. That's shady. Mm -mm, that's absolutely not okay. Red flag. Yeah, they gotta have a page of they gotta uh, have all their clients. Yeah. Don't they all post like before and after pictures? Exactly. So she's like, uh-uh, that's a little bit shady. I'm not I'm not messing with this. It's weird. No, it's like stop raining on my sex parade. Like he's a nice guy. Like he's just busy with work. He does reconstructive surgery. Maybe it's not like a plastic surgeon. So anyways, by the way, Molly, do you remember Paul? He was our bartender at the bar. Remember Paul? The guy that you were, you know, hooking up with? Oh yeah! Paul! Wow, he's such a nice guy. I don't remember why I stopped hooking up with him. <laughs> Molly, probably because you literally want to roam free and you hate being attached to somebody. That's why. And Molly laughs and they hang up because she's got to go back to work. So the next day, Steve comes over again. I mean, they're really taking it fast. They're eating takeout. Noah's going in on some short ribs, like using her hands and everything, just like all over her face. And she's like, they're so good. They're my favorite. You need to, you need to try these short ribs. They're the best. Steve's like, oh, <laughs> I don't eat animals. But feel free to go ahead. Like, really, I'm not like that. Like, I don't mind. In fact, I want you to finish the entire plate of short ribs. And Noah looks sad and she says, I can't. You ruined it for me. She really? goes and she washes her hands, but it's like all cute jokes, right? Mm. So this is getting intense. So, um, ah. you know, What's sounds that? salt. Sugar? This is sugar. sugar. Oh, brown sugar. Wow, yeah. That's a lot. so much sugar. So Steve is asking her, you know. So did you did you tell anybody about us? So again, sounds like he's a married person, doesn't he? Maybe Molly's right. Mm. Maybe he is married. It sounds a little bit suspicious. Is she suspect suspecting? Yes, and Noah says, maybe. I might have told my best friend Molly. I told her that I met a really cool guy and that I might like him. Just a little bit. Oh yeah? Well, tell me about Molly. 
Um, well, we met like seven years ago and we briefly worked together. I think you guys would get along. She's like really cool. And the two of them start cuddling and dancing and Steve, being the spontaneous doctor with work-life freedom and disposable income says, f*** it, we should go somewhere. I mean, let's go somewhere fun for the weekend. Why don't we? Uh, like, like where? Sure, I guess, where? I don't know, I'll surprise you. I'll plan it out, we'll go away for the weekend, it'll be great. So right when he leaves, Noah jumps on the phone and she tells Molly, hey, I'm going away for the weekend. And Molly is not pleased. Molly's like, what's wrong with you? I haven't even met this guy and you're going on a surprise trip with him? Like it's way too soon. So Noah's like, oh shit, I totally forgot I need to send you the picture of him. I took it this morning, he's so cute. So she sends the picture. I mean, he looks cute, Noah, but but I can barely even tell the picture's so... Like, why'd you take this picture? You're such a creep. No, he's not just cute, Molly. He's ridiculously cute. Besides, I'm just gonna go, you know? Like, I'm in my fuck it era. He's so much better than all the other guys that I've been dealing with lately, and I'm gonna go. So I'll text you later. Okay, fine, I guess. I'm happy for you. Like, this is every straight girl's fantasy come true, right? Love you. So Noah starts packing her things and he picks her up in his, in his Tessie. Oh. oh yeah, he picks her up in the... <laughs> well, I was gonna say vroom vroom, but it don't make noise. It's a silent killer. Okay, so now that we've done that, will you add the vanilla into this? Oh yeah. And then two room temperature eggs. It smells so good. We're gonna add in slowly. Oof, that seems Not cool. Not a lot, just slow amounts. Whoa. That looks good. Oh, this is gonna be so pretty, no? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my god, it looks like a green clay. Oh my god, it looks so oh good. Oh my god. So now, the last step of this is to add in your white chocolate chips. Ooh, that's a lot. And then incorporate to mix, you know, like this. That one is in the fridge resting for the next 30 minutes. Meanwhile, Steve picks her up in his Tessa, test Tessie, tube. Tessie, Tessie. Okay, he picks her up in his test tube and they start <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And they just start driving deep into the forest. He says, why don't we stop by my house first? We can head out early in the morning for the vacation, so we'll go to my place for tonight. Obviously, at first she's getting a little bit nervous. I mean, this whole thing is nerve-wracking. She's, she's never done this before. Like, this is, this is not like Noah. Into the woods they're going. So she's sitting there getting a little bit angsty, trying to text Molly, and he says, God, I wanted to wait, but... I'm taking you to Cottage Grove this weekend. So this is like a really nice area to vacation, relax. Mm. Think of it as like Joshua Tree, Palm Springs, right? She's so excited. She's freaking out. She's like, oh my God, I hate surprises. This is perfect. I would have been so anxious all night. And I've never been to Cottage Grove, but I've been wanting to go. So she tries to text Molly. Hey, I'm going to Cottage Grove this weekend. Because again, nobody knows where she's headed, but she has no signal. She's like, fork. I've got no signal. So she didn't send any message out? No. Dang. And he says, yeah, the service is kind of shitty on the way, but when it gets to my place, I have Wi-Fi, so it's gonna get better. So they get to Steve's place, and it is a beautiful, fancy house in the woods. Like, I'm sorry, are you Dr. Miami? Did you do work on the Kardashians? Where did you get this type of money, Mr. Plastic Surgery Man? It's surrounded by trees, by nature. It's kind of got this like mid-century modern feel. And when they get down into his place, they sit down in the living room, Steve starts making some fancy drinks for the two of them. He's got like a bar, like that's how fancy it is, like a bar cart. But it's like a fancy bar cart. <laughs> stupid, you're stupid. And Noah tells him straight up, you, this house is pretty intimidating, Steve. Like, you're all about these fancy cocktails and I'm more of like a frozen pancakes type of girl. Uh. Yeah, but that's what I like about you. No pretending. By the way, the house in Cottage Grove. Here, take this. Uh, I added cherries because remember at the bar you said you like cherries. So she's sipping on her drink and she's like, ooh, it's good. Did you put like nectarines in here? So good. So he's like, oh, by the way, the house at Cottage Grove, it's got a, I'm like the house at Cottage Cheese, it's got a hot tub. I don't know what you packed in that big old bag of yours, but hopefully you brought something to swim in. And as he's talking, Noah starts getting dizzy. Oh, oh my god. Her, his voice starts getting muffled, and it's pretty obvious what's happening. He's drugged her, oh. and she falls to the ground in his living room. And he continues to sit there and drink his drink. 
And when she comes to, she wakes up in this little mattress on the ground in the middle of a pretty fancy room. Like this doesn't look like a creepy basement with concrete floors. It's honestly like a really nice bedroom, <laughs> but it has no furniture. It's an empty fan fancy room. All there is is the little mattress that she's on and a chair on the opposite side. Steve is sitting in that armchair and she starts waking up like, God, what happened last night? Oh, I drugged you. Very funny. Like and as she tries to get up from her mattress, she gets pulled back and the very distinct sound of chains clinking against each other fills the no. room. Steve, what's going on? I'm gonna tell you, but you're gonna freak out. No, 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 this can't be happening. Steve, what's going on? Can you please just take these off, Steve? Can you just please let me go? I can't do that. You know I can't do that. And Noah starts sobbing, begging to be like, oh, please tell me what's going on. Please just help me, please. And he just patiently waits until she calms down. And she's screaming and she's screaming and she screams, are you gonna rape me? No, I'm not gonna rape you. I like you, all right? Now, I want you to listen to me very carefully. Are you listening to me? And she's hyperventilating because, I mean, how can you be focused in this moment? So he screams, Noah! There you are. I'm gonna tell you now, and uh, I'm gonna sell your meat. People pay a lot of money for it, and your hair, and other weird shit like that. I'm not gonna kill you though, because the fresher the meat, even better. So I'm gonna keep you alive <laughs> for as long as I can, unless you act up, all right? But listen, till then, I'm gonna take good care of you. Um, I'm gonna cook for you, I'm gonna take care of you, help you shower. I'm a really good cook, by the way, you just don't know it yet. Besides, it's not that bad, isn't it? Noah starts freaking out. She's like trying to frantically undo herself from the chains because, I don't know, what kind of freaking reaction would you have? You would have the same reaction. Steve walks over to her and holds her in a tight embrace. Shh. No need to be dramatic. Shh. Meanwhile, Molly is texting Noah's phone. Where the f*** are you? You're getting me freaked out. Call me, text me, like I wanna hear where he took you. Are you okay? And Noah responds, we're in Cottage Grove. I'll try to call later, but service isn't great. So we can assume that Noah is not sending this text. She also proceeds to send a picture of a waterfall from Cottage Grove. So it seems like from Molly's perspective, this girl is in love. She's so happy. She's having the time of her life. Molly shakes her head. Meanwhile, Noah is being held captive, freaking the fork out, and she hears something through the wall. So Steve is left at this point, and she's just chained up in this room. And she hears a voice through the wall. Hello? <gasps> There's more? It's another oh girl's my voice. God. Her name is Penny. And Noah starts screaming, please help me, help me, please. I can't, I can't help you. We're on the same boat. Tell me your name. Noah? Oh, well, I'm Penny. I was in town visiting and I met Steve and now I'm slowly being eaten. How long have you been in here, Penny? I don't know, I've lost track. I'm not even sure what time of day it is, to be honest. People have to be looking for you, right? Your, your friends, your family, the, the police, they have to be searching for you by now, right? They're gonna find you. The problem is, I don't really have much family. Neither do I. Are there others? Just one. Melissa! <sighs> Melissa, can you hear me? Oh my god. What in the world? And world? Melissa starts singing. Sorry, Melissa, she, um, she has lost her mind. But I, I get it, no judgment here. Meanwhile, Molly at work starts searching for Steve online, okay? Yes, Penny doesn't got family, she doesn't have friends in the area, she's from out of town, but our girl Noah, yes, yeah, she doesn't have family either, but she's got Molly, okay? So Molly starts looking up Steve plastic surgery online and the city name, and she's going down the list of Google hits when Molly gets another text message from Noah, and it says, having the best time, need a technology break though, so shutting down my phone for a bit. It's a little weird. Um, okay, let me respond. Really? Oh, okay, I love you. And Noah sends back a heart emoji. That's weird. Molly knows it. She immediately, like when you know you text your friend, they uh. either text you, love you too. Like this is something that you say all the time and now all of a sudden you're sending a heart emoji. Mm. Molly knows it's weird. She immediately reverse searches the waterfall picture that Noah sent and sure enough, it's a stock photo from the Cottage Grove website. 
thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode. You know that feeling that after you watch a movie, you just want to talk to somebody about it. You want to talk out your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions that you're left with. That's how I feel, but with my everyday life. If something happens in the day, I just want to talk it out. If I feel some type of way, if I feel like this got me a little bit emotional, I just want to talk it through. And I love that BetterHelp has made it so much easier to talk to my therapist because I think everybody needs that. I think everybody could have someone to talk to. And if that's you, you need to check out BetterHelp. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist that you can actually start communicating with in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, but it's professional therapy done securely online. Here's the coolest parts. They have over 20,000 therapists and they cover a huge range of expertise and it's available worldwide. Because if you're traveling or moving around or studying abroad, those are the moments in life where you really need to talk to somebody. I love my therapist and if I did traditional in-office therapy, it would have been so hard when we moved across the country or when I go travel. But with BetterHelp, I can log into my account anytime, send a message to my therapist, and get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, I can even schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's even more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash bam. That's betterhelp.com slash bam and join over the 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And right now, if you guys go to betterhelp.com slash bam, you'll get 10% off your first month. So she starts panicking. Meanwhile, back at the little house, Steve is in the kitchen butchering up the most delicious, decadent human leg. Listen, if this wasn't baking a mystery, you know what, I could have baked a pork chop at this point. Baking up a human leg. He's listening to music, singing while he's chefing it what up. What do you mean human this, leg? Like a whole leg? Like, like a whole leg, leg yeah. And from, he's, from thigh to yeah, he's toes? From, yeah. God. Well, the foot is chopped off, so he's now deboning it and slicing it into thinly sliced meat. He, the leg belongs to um, another girl named Melissa Dunton. Yeah, the girl in the that's, that's singing. singing. Yeah, bro, her bro. leg. Who does he? They, who does he sell it to? Already, he butchers it up and into a ton of small, different boxes, presumably to ship off to buyers like a monthly subscription. Human meat box. So human eats human. Yeah. There's such thing. What's interesting is that in every single picture that he ships off of little bits of you know human leg, he even includes Melissa's picture as well as a few personal items. So it seems just like Noah, all these girls came with him on the intention of going away for the weekend. So they packed an entire suitcase of things. So in one he'll throw in a pair of sunglasses, in another a pair of underwear, mm. in another maybe a shirt. And just like that, a hard days of work done. A man with a very long ponytail, like he looks like, listen, if I ran into him at a subway station in New York City, like I would never fuck with this guy. He comes just muscular in a suit to pick up all the boxes of meat to be shipped off to very important people, it seems. Even the logo of the boxes, like on top, you know how they have like a shipping logo? It's essentially like a devil looking ox. It looks super fancy. If I created a secret society, that's what I would want my logo to look like. This does not seem like a cheap service or a cheap operation. So he goes back to Noah and she demands, can I, can I take a shower? And oddly enough, Steve agrees. And he says, but only, why don't you give me a smile? This again, that throwback to modern dating when guys be telling girls to smile. So she stands there, she weighs out her options and she gives him a little smile. And he tells her, you know, it's, it's still me. At the end of the day, I'm still the guy at the bar. No games, no predictions, that's me, isn't that what you wanted? So he grabs her by the chains and he leads her to, to get to the shower through his big mansion, which is much bigger than we thought. So there's this very long staircase that she's, she's like first led through this long hallway, then up a very long staircase with no railing. I can't imagine that was permit approved. And there is this magical door where we can just imagine that's where freedom lies. Because once they pass it, they're in his regular house, the living room that she remembers, you know, all of these different things. So she's in this like underground bunker, essentially. Mm. She sees that certain parts of the house, there are specks of blood on the walls. 
So either he's butchering up a lot of people or maybe someone had tried to make a run for it. And she believes that this is her one and only chance. So before he chops her up into the meat section, into some fucking chicken breast fillets, she tries to make a run for it. But I mean, it's dumb. She's with Steve. So of course he just grabs her, bonks her up against the wall until she passes out. And she wakes up on the surgery table. Hello? I can't move. And Steve pops up in full on scrubs, looking like a neurosurgeon. But he looks like he's lost his mind. There's rock music playing, he's listening to it, and he says, Yeah, it's because I gave you an epidural. You're not gonna feel a thing. And he goes back to working on something. You can hear a bunch of like medical machines. She can't look though. She can't even go back to sleep. She doesn't feel anything, and she says, What are you, what are you doing? I'm taking your. She's screaming, no, 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 please, please don't. And she's crying, but she can't move. But she's completely aware that he's chopping up her ass meat. Oh my God. Well, Noah, you lost my trust. There's going to be consequences. And he just starts singing to his happy music while literally sawing off her ass. But don't worry, Noah. I'm a doctor, remember? Meanwhile, Molly, our only hope in life, goes to the bar that Steve and Noah had hung out in. Remember? Do you remember this? Are you a good friend? Are you going to save me from disaster for friends? She remembers that Noah had mentioned that the bartender was Paul, a guy that she used to hook up with. So she rushes over there and she runs into Paul and he's not, he's not giving it to her. He's like, listen, I, I'm, I could lose my job. Like, what do you want me to find out? I could lose my job. Why don't you go to the police if you're that worried? And what? What, Paul? Tell the police that my friend went off with some guy that she met and she's texting me, but I don't think it's her that's texting me. You want me to say that? You think the police will really care? I mean, yeah, why not? She's white. I'm sure they'll care. Dang. Yeah. So they're both black. And she's like, I'm not joking. She would never disappear like this. Please. I I'm sure he must have like used his credit card to pay. You, you were the bartender. Even just his last name. Like, I don't even have his last name. That would be so much help. No one would know that you gave it to me. Please. Please. She does her little pouty lips and he tells her, let me think about it and I'll call you. Meanwhile, Noah is laying on her stomach eating moosh for food. Because, you know, she can't sit on her ass. It's gone. Wow. You might be like, are you Noah? Where's your ass? Rude. Rude, rude, rude. So Penny's checking in on her through the door. How's your ass? I don't know. I guess the pain meds are making me not think about it as much, I guess. I just want to hurt him. Yeah, it's literally all I think about too. I can't believe I fucking slept with the guy. Wait, what? Yeah, I slept with him before I got here. I think you're one of the first I've heard that slept with him. None of us have ever slept with him. I can't believe you slept with him. Well, I'm not slut shaming you, by the way. I'm just surprised. I didn't know. I didn't know he was. I didn't know. And so I guess this conversation implies that maybe Steve is a little bit closer to Noah than the rest of the girls. Maybe. Anyway, our beautiful friend Molly is out there getting Steve's last name. But in reality, or so she thought, she was just getting a last name. Instead, she got a whole new name. The credit card transaction showed that Steve is actually a Brandon Kemp. Oh, and as Molly predicted, he's freaking married with kids. So he tracks down, she tracks down his house and starts stalking him to see if she can catch him. But instead of him, she's just stalking his wife and his kids. She can't believe that he has a whole nother family. Like at this point, she has no idea what he's doing to Noah. She just knows this guy's got a whole ass family. So she's kind of panicking. She doesn't even know who to call. Meanwhile, Steve is going back into Noah's room, trying to talk to her. He let her have some magazines to read to keep her busy. Sure, they're old, but I mean, something to take her mind off of it. And he's just ranting to her as if they're friends. He's in his full-on doctor scrubs and he says, God, I'm so tired. I woke up at 2 a.m. and I'm like, really now? And then I was up till 6 a.m. and what the fuck am I going to do at 6 a.m.? You think I'm going to go back to sleep because I'm going to be back up at 9 a.m. And then it's like, you're going to be up in three hours. So why would I go back to sleep like I'm just here doing this shit. so exhausted anyway how are the meds listen it's gonna take a little bit of time but eventually you're just gonna accept that things just don't always turn out the way that you thought they would you know we all die but it's just really how we decide to go out and Noah's sitting there and she looks up from her magazines and she says why did you sleep with me I don't I don't know I told you I told you I liked you anyway it was a mistake all right Try to relax. Stress isn't good for the meat. 
and Steve leaves. Now Noah's trying to go back to reading her magazines and uh, she flips a page. What's that? She looks closer. Near the spine of the magazine, there's a tiny little note and it says, if you're reading this, this means he likes you. Use it. Keep fucking fighting. Sending strength. Signed, Sammy Akbar. Huh. But that night there was no strength because Penny was taken away for another surgery. And when she gets back, Noah's freaking out. Penny, are you okay? Just please answer me. Penny, are you okay? No. I'm done. I'm done fighting. I don't even know who I am anymore. I just hope he fucking chokes. I hope he fucking gets a tapeworm and it just eats him from the inside slowly all the way up. And I hope that all of his fucking weirdo friends, I hope they all shit and puke out of their eyes till they're all fucking dead. And Noah tries to cheer her up and tells her to stay strong. And meanwhile, on the outside, Molly is still stalking the guy's family. She even sends her location to Paul the bartender and um, she says with a message, just in case shit gets weird, or so you can come over later, winky face. And Molly walks up to the door of the family house, the other family, and through the intercom, Steve's wife, Anne, she screams, whatever you're selling, I'm not interested. Oh, sorry, I'm not selling anything. My name is Molly and I'm looking for my friend Noah and I think you could help me. Your husband might know her. It really should only take a minute, please. You wait a little while. And Anne, the wife, slams open the door and says, Do you know how weird that sounds? My husband might know her. Your friend is missing. Y yes, I know, but I think you can help me. Okay, fine, come in. So they sit down in the living room, and Anne tells Molly that she's not even sure that's her husband in the picture. So Molly had shown that picture that Noah had taken. She, besides, I mean, he's been with me every single morning. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't mess with his schedule. And I saw him before he went to work today. Well, does he ever go out of town for work or something like that? They went to Cottage Grove like a week ago, and I haven't heard from her since. I'm sorry, I have no idea, and he doesn't really go on business trips. I just don't really know how to help you. It seems like Anne's just not that interested in helping, if I'm being honest. Like, if that were me, I'd sit there, first of all, gotta make sure it's not my husband. Second of all, I feel like I'd still be concerned. Like, do you want me to go to the police with you? Like, do you want me to drive you to the police station? You wanna call the cops right now? Like, I'd, I'd be asking more than like, I'm sorry, I can't really help you. So then the door clicks open <clears throat> and she says, that's my husband, you need to leave. Listen, Anne, I'm just so desperate. Woman to woman, maybe your husband has more information. I'm not trying to mess anything up for anybody. Like, your family, it's fine. I just, I'm trying to find my friend. That's it. Steve walks in and gives oh Anne a kiss on the lips and says, Hey, honey, what's going on? Oh, nothing, sweetie. This woman was just leaving. S sorry, I just, so sorry. Are you Steve? No, I'm Brandon. But you go by Steve, right? She is ballsy. Bro, why would she say that? No, just no. Brandon. Who are you? I'm Molly. Uh, my friend Noah, I think you know her. She's missing. Noah? I don't know a Noah. <laughs> okay, that was me. He just said, I don't know her. I don't, I've never heard that name. I, sorry, I think you have the wrong house. Okay, you're right. Sorry, that was my bad. So Steve is walking to the door to escort Molly out. And as she's walking behind him, she can't help herself. She pulls out her phone and calls Noah. She has the number. Oh no, my. she calls Noah's phone. Noah's phone. Oh, okay. And guess whose pocket starts ringing. No way. Steve stops at the door, takes Noah's phone out of his pocket, and says, oh, look, it's you. You really shouldn't have done that. And from behind, his wife knocks out Molly. The wife is in so on it. The wife is in? Wow. So the next time Steve goes over to Noah's room, the message in the magazine has inspired her and she starts trying to have conversation with Steve. She asks him, so what does it taste like? What? Oh, uh, human. Um, I guess it depends where it comes from and how it's prepared, if it's done right. Oh, if it's done right, it's exquisite. It's like nothing you've ever had before. And Noah doesn't respond and Steve leaves, but it just left this tiny little seed planted in his mind. It seems like Noah didn't look too grossed out. She also didn't look overly fake excited. It seemed like genuine curiosity. She was calm, intrigued, and the next day, Steve comes back into her room and says, so why did you ask me what it tastes like? Oh, um, I don't, I don't know, I was just curious. 
You were curious? You expect me to believe that? You can believe what you want, I guess, Steve. Okay, fine. Let's have dinner. Let's see how curious you really are. I brought you some stuff. Figured you might want to change before dinner. And he drops a plastic bag in her room. Meanwhile, on the outside, and the wife is starting to feel self-conscious. It seems like she knows that her husband does for a living, right? She, she's in on it, and she's okay with it. Okay enough that she essentially is killing another girl for him because you really think Molly's gonna make it out alive? But she can't help but feel like her husband is cheating on her. You know, that's what she cares about. She's looking at her face, is she getting old? She's getting a little bit confused. Regardless, she decides she's gonna take a shower since Brandon slash Steve will be working late tonight to have dinner. And she's a little bit stressed. So we see her getting undressed for her shower and we see that she is missing a leg or part of her leg. She has the prosthetic leg. Sure, this could be unrelated, but we can only assume that maybe she once was a Noah, <gasps> once a victim of Steve's and they ended up getting married. After he ate her leg, of course. So now back to Steve working late. He wants to have dinner with Noah, mainly to see if she's really interested in trying human meat or if he's just, she's just pulling his leg. Sorry. He has her chained up, but in the upstairs kitchen now with a big glass of wine and she's, she's drinking it. And he says, don't worry, I'm not gonna be drugging you tonight. <laughs> so why are you curious anyway? Uh, I just wanna know when you first tried it. Now at this point, Steve is cooking, he's answering her questions, he's distracted, and she's looking around surveying the room. All the escape, escape points, she's looking at the doors, the windows, everything. Uh, I think I was like 18 or 19 when I first tried it. You know, I, I was a normal kid back then. I had friends, I had a normal life, and now I gotta deal with all of this shit. And I can't even share this with anyone. I couldn't even talk about it back then, but now, and then I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't get the taste out of my mouth, the texture. I loved the way it made me feel. So I thought, I gotta find out if there's more people out there, you know? I can't be the possibly, I can't possibly be the only one that feels this way. And I wasn't. There was a whole community of people that are dedicated to this. That's when it started. It started making sense. My life, my purpose started making sense. It's a very powerful thing, you know? The whole concept of this is giving yourself over to somebody, becoming one with somebody forever. And that's a beautiful thing. It's surrender, it's love, and it's just... And, and how many people are in this community? Not many, you know, the 1% of the 1%, you know? There is nothing that these people can't afford, right? They want the one thing that nobody else has or can get. And that's where I come in. I get it for them. I made a name for myself and my clientele are just mainly these super old rich people and they've got nothing else in life that they need. It's very bougie, right? You know how rich people like it. You know, this is so ironic. I just remember when they first were dating, he's like, I don't eat meat. Yes. Oh. He only eats human meat. He only eats human meat. He did say that. Bro, this is crazy. So is it just women that you eat? Yeah, I mean, that's where the market is right now. Plus, women just taste better. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, by the way, the cookies are done baking. We're gonna wait a little, though. Should oh, really? I just press one, though? Press? Why? Or not press, just like... Oh, oh do my I God. have to wait? But... It looks... I don't know. I think they say you have to wait. A few... Oh, you broke it! I know, because I'm trying to see if it's cooked. Whoa, that doesn't it's look all cooked. Hold on, let me try. That doesn't look cooked. I feel like it's more like a like a bread texture. Cooked? Amazing. Really? Should mm -hmm. we just still wait or you should sure? Wait. Mm-hmm. Should you we? should wait. Really? <laughs> wait, wait, what are you doing? Wow. Wait, should we wait or should we no wait? Oh, okay, fine. Go. Go, go for are it. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna die? No. Mm. Wow. It's like matcha. Mm -hmm. What the? It's like matcha. Like matcha bread. Different. And it's gooey. The side is crispy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Overall, it's really wow. gooey. Mm -hmm. Really good. Mm -hmm. You said this is white chocolate? Mm. Yeah. Oh, man. They this said it's good. the gooey and the crunchy outside, and it's wow. so warm. It's not It's not uh, too sweet at so all. So good. This is the first time you bake something that impresses. Oh, my God. Wow. I can't. It's so good. I can't believe I did it. 
I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's something in my eye. So he says that's where the market is. You know, women just taste better. So he cooks up this little something, and he says, I don't know if you're willing to try it. And he puts down a very, very small plate of noodles, like pasta noodles with one meatball on top. And she just asks, "Is it um, is it me?" No, 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 don't worry. We can have a bite together. So Noah starts eating and he tells her, this meal right here is about $30,000. That's, that's crazy. It would have been more if she had been alive. Her name was Hope though, which is kind of funny. And Noah starts sitting there and she takes a bite and you can see her hand gripping the side of her chair and she's like, yeah, it's kind of funny or stupid. It's just not what I expected. Um, the meat is, indescribable. So after dinner, he escorts her back to her room and she says, thank you, Steve. Thank mm. you, Noah. You know, I knew you were special because you're fucked up too. And he closes the door and Noah rushes to the bathroom and starts throwing up. Meanwhile, Steve has other plans. He's not ending the night, okay? He decides he's gonna go cut up Molly in his free time because what else do you do after a nice, enjoyable dinner date? So even Penny and Noah realize that someone new is there that's not Melissa. It's somebody else. And Penny tells Noah, you know, the other night I was sitting here thinking about how nice it was that I can talk to you. But then I thought to myself, wait a minute, what if she's not real? What if I'm going crazy like Melissa? I felt like I had an imaginary friend, but, it, but you're not imaginary, right? Because if you were, why would I have named you Noah? I would have named you something like, I don't know, Sean Connery. So she's like trying to say, she thinks she's losing her fucking marbles. Like it's about time that they need to get out of there before shit goes down and these girls are gonna become, just enter into psychosis at this point. So the next day, Sean, or Steve, I was gonna say Sean Connery, Steve goes back into Noah's room with a gift. What is it? She opens it up slowly and inside is a human, I'm just kidding, it's a pink dress and some makeup. So you can freshen up. I'd love to take you to dinner again tonight at seven. And he leaves and he goes to get ready. And you can tell that Steve is interested. Oh, in his room getting ready. He's taken off his wedding band. He's dressing up in a full on suit and tie the whole nine yards. He even gracefully helps her limp into the dining seat chair. Yeah, because you know, he chopped off her ass and ate it. She asks if this one's a date and he says, potentially. You know, I've been thinking about what you said the other night about growing up and it made me realize that nobody was really ever cooking for you. And that made me really sad, Noah. Everyone has to have someone cook for them once in a while. So they start eating and Noah says, well, who's this? This one? Melissa. Oh, well, that's just so boring, isn't it, Steve? I mean, she tastes so decadent, but her name is just Melissa? I thought you were gonna say something like joy. I guess we finished all of hope. Oh no, no, there's much hope left. And the two of them start giggling and laughing. And she says, so did Melissa ever get a candle at dinner? And Steve, instead of responding, he walks her to a giant, giant art piece on the wall. And when he presses a button, it lifts up and it reveals a hidden bookshelf. Each little cubby has a picture of a girl as well as personal items like clothes, hairbrushes, bras, undergarments. Welcome to my world. You know, they kind of become a part of you in some way. There, that's Melissa right there. And no, she never had a candle at dinner. Well, where's my stuff? Still with me, I guess. And while she's about to leave from the bookshelf, she sees a cubby dedicated to phone cases and she very clearly sees Molly's phone case. Yo. But what is she gonna do? So back to dinner they go and they start eating and he puts a plate on the table and he says, this one is breast meat and it's really juicy, tender. It might even taste familiar. And Noah starts cracking up laughing. What, did I say something funny? No, it's just, it's so stupid. It's, it's so dumb. What, just tell me. It's just, I wanted to say, you saved the breast for last. And the two start giggling again. And she's like, you know, this is really nice, Steve. Thank you, you're right, nobody has ever cooked for me. It's not quite how I pictured it, but what can I say? Her tits are better than mine. And they start cracking up again. 
<laughs> and she's like, so you're not disagreeing? And the two of them giggle some more. And then all of a sudden, Noah starts breaking down into tears. Sorry, sorry. It's just that I'm fine. And it's really nice. Like all of this, it really, truly, it's so nice. But it's just, I'm so confused. This whole thing is so confusing. Like I feel, I feel awful. I just feel awful. Because I don't feel awful. So I feel awful that I don't feel awful. And Steve comforts her and kisses her tear-streaked face and says, it's okay, you're just different. And I knew at the moment that I met you. And the two of them, they start making out. They go into the living room and they do a dance. This is a dance that went viral on TikTok. They're just awkwardly staring at the camera. There's so many very weird, odd, moments in this movie and this is definitely one of them just staring at the camera dancing side by side it's an odd moment to say the least and the, into the bedroom they go where they're seducing each other and he's trying to make out with her but she's like oh no 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 i'm going downstairs and getting some sausage <laughs> from the meat market so she goes down on him and she bites him as hard as she can and she stuffs toothpaste soaked cotton pads into his eyes and she makes a run for it. Mm. She scrambles to get his keys and runs out, locking him in the room, all the while he's screaming about how he's gonna cut her heart out and fucking eat it. So when she gets out, the first person she saves is Molly and she's like, oh my God, oh my God, Molly, I'm so sorry. Here, come on, come on, come on, give me your hand. The next person she goes to save is Penny. Now, it's not gonna be easy to run away since Penny has been missing a leg, but the two girls, they help her. And when they get to the top floor, the three girls attack Steve. I mean, there's blood gushing out of each and every single one of them. Steve is like a, he's, he's not going down without a fight. He's angry, he's pissed, he just got his pee bit okay he's enraged he's grabbing at them trying to kill them with kitchen knives they're trying to strangle him he's trying to strangle them until finally they get him down and they try to leave and the three girls make it outside into the woods steve is screaming chasing after the after them with a gun and he's screaming no i'm sorry i am sorry is that what you want me to say at the same time, Anne makes it to the house with the bodyguard that was delivering the meat packages. She sees the blood, she sees the knife, she hears the gunshots from outside, and they both rush outside. Meanwhile, Molly, Penny, and Noah, they attack Steve. They overpower him, they take his gun, Noah stands over him, and they... The, Molly and Noah honestly just start going in on him like they were punching him, kicking him and everything. And she grabs the gun, and she says, come on now. Just give me a smile. Dang. And shoots him in the face. And Noah and Molly hug, and they're trying to figure out how to get out of the desolate woods. Noah says she's got to go back. She dropped her phone, and they need to call for help. So she goes back to the side of the house, not knowing that his wife, Anne, is now there. So Molly and Penny are standing outside. Anne and her bodyguard, the delivery man, they, they come across Steve's body, and suddenly, it feels like another plot twist. Remember how Anne seemed like the one that was worried about her husband and so nervous? She looks at the body and she goes, hmm, clean it up. She's the one behind it. And get his body on ice. Ah. She's, she's trying to cut the, sell oh yeah, the husband meat. She's trying to sell the husband meat. She doesn't even seem remotely sad. She didn't give a fork that her husband's cheating on her. No, this is her operation, okay? So while Noah is going into the woods to find her phone, which she dropped into the leaves, Anne comes up behind her and says, Oh my God, you got him. I thought this would never end. What? Who the hell are you? Thank you so much. We're free now, right? Thank you. Thank you. And Anne pretends to go in to hug Noah but she starts strangling her and they drop to the ground and Anne is screaming at Noah, I want to watch your life slip away. And she's cradling her, literally strangling her. But Noah reaches into her chest, grabs her keys that she hid in her bra and stabs Anne in the neck. And they start chasing each other, but Molly shows up and starts killing Anne with a shovel. And the whole time she's screaming, bitches like you are the fucking problem. <laughs> No one's like, who the hell was that? Oh, Steve's wife. He's married? <laughs> was married. And she sits down next to Noah. And Noah says, I fucking love you, Molly. 
I love you more. And her phone flashes open and she looks down. And it was a text coming in from that shitty date she had. And it was, you up? <laughs> from Chad. And that is how the movie ends. You up? Wow. You up. Bro, so good. No? So good! Wait, I have a question though. Yes. How does a wife is behind the operation if her leg, one of her leg is cut off? Maybe, maybe it's unrelated. Or a cover up? Or maybe she no. was a victim, but then she took over. She got married and she was like, you're running this sh whack. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know how to run a hey, business. Let where's, me show you. The, where's the bodyguard? Oh, yeah. No, it's sunset. Uh, he got lost in the woods. <laughs> he, he was too busy getting the ice. <laughs> he's at the gas station line right now with or, the ice. Or he's trying to, he's like, ah, yeah. screw this job. I'm Did leave. you know there's like a supply chain shortage on ice? <laughs> <laughs> right, right now? Yeah, yeah. You know how that doesn't make sense, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> he was like, damn, no wonder my sodas be expensive. <laughs> For a second, I almost believed it. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's bacon of mystery. Go make these matcha cookies. Um, they're from a place called simplecooking.com. <laughs> no, it's called cookingsimple.com. It's pretty good, no? Mm -hmm. It's so gooey. These are the gooeyest. Do you yeah. think this was simple? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. These are the most intricate cookies that I've ever made. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's bacon of mystery, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.